previously on To The House. Everybody can feel the, the end of the season. Some of the professors are telling you, you might want to drop a class. Tomorrow's the last day for drop ad. Going into the Marist game, you know, there's a lot to play for. It's our last home game. It's senior day. This defense is awfully young and awfully beat up. They get the ball first, they score in literally two plays. We're too far behind and too many mistakes have happened. Seniors, apologies we didn't let you out with a win. Evan, Jared, I'm so sorry we didn't do that for you. I'm sorry about your season. You know, it was pretty eye-opening seeing him like open himself up and like apologizing. Hey, last real one of the week. Let's go. Hose on one, two, one. Hose! Oh. Going to the St. Thomas, our last game of the year. Everyone's fired up, trying to get this last win of the season. You know, we've lost eight straight, so we're trying to end it on a win here. Good. You know, we play St. Thomas. They were a D3 last year, but you know, they blew everybody out in their conference. So they eventually moved up to D1, which really never happened. We need uh, somebody to step up and have a monster day, to have a chance to beat these guys. Really, really do, because they're really good on offense, and they're gonna push around our defense a little bit. We've gotta be able to score some. The only way we're gonna be able to do that is if we're efficient. They're third in the conference, so they're gonna be a tough opponent, and they've definitely got a home field advantage being in Minnesota. Watching the film, it's going into St. Thomas. The one thing that did concern me is their defensive and offensive lines were, I thought, as fundamentally sound and as big and strong as anybody's, including maybe San Diego. And I, and I thought their guys were as good as it gets at this level. Defensively, they like to blitz a lot, so we're trying to prepare for that. That's either going to look really good or really terrible. I have no idea which one's going to look. This is the last week, so, so let's, let's give it all we got this last week. Enjoy each other, like I say. Seniors, we do appreciate you. Senior night was the other night. Sorry I didn't end it with a win for you, but we still got another chance this week against a very, very good St. Thomas team, and I uh, hope you guys get to, get to win your last one. So I hope everybody's all in on that. Everything I do this week is the last time I'll ever be doing it, pretty much. Especially after a senior day getting ruined. There's no other option. I'm looking to win this game. I don't want to look back and have any regrets. I'm going to give it all I got, not just on Saturday, but 24-7 every day this week. Watch as much film as I can, do as much footwork as I can, do everything to make sure that I'm, I'm giving my all to this team and trying to boost morale at practice, trying to do whatever I can and play sharp to get a win this Saturday. As soon as you graduate, I'm eligible here. I'm gonna just save one class and just have to. Play a smart Tim Tebow. I just started the work study program, mm -hmm. and like I'm trying to see how, how I can like figure out the financial because I have no time to work like that. Yeah. I'm an independent student, so I mean like I pay all my bills. Like it's got frustrating because once I step off the field and um. Go, go in, I'm hungry, or like, I miss a bill. It's like, dang, I need some money. And it was to the point where it's like, do I need to quit football to, you know, have a source of income? I need a co-signer. co for what? You gotta take extra loan. If you were giving me advice, how would you? I would say, as soon as the season's over with, go find a job and work part-time. And do, and do other odd stuff. You know, here and there, like mowing my yard. Appreciate you coming. Yes, sir. This is good. It helps me and it helps you. So we're, we're yes, sir. glad about that. It just meant a lot to me personally because, you know, everyone was saying how, oh, Coach Kelly's a bad guy. He doesn't really care about, you know, your field. I care about football and, you know, all these things. And I'm like, the dude just let me cut his grass for money. I feel like the reason why he took a chance on me was because how hard I worked through everything that I went through. When you ace, it can't stop. So growing up, you know, I never had a dad. My mom, she's very abusive to me. She struggled, you know, drugs and everything. And I was homeless in probably the age of seven going to eight when I was adopted. I just didn't want someone to look at me differently, you know. Me being mentally stable now, it was like, okay, I don't care what you think. I'm gonna tell my story to help other people. Good. He's getting better. Hey, go f***ing block, boy. I always thought I wasn't talented enough um, because people always tell me you're too short or you're not fast enough or you're not the strongest. And so now I'm playing D1 ball. It's an amazing feeling. Just be blessed to have the opportunity to play. Be blessed that, you know, that you have one more game to play. Be blessed you have an opportunity to have fun. It's gonna be cold. We still gotta do it. You might as well enjoy it. Last practice of the year, let's go.
Hey, right, let's get it in, let's get it in. We're looking for quality today, not quantity. Quality, we can shorten it up and we get quality. I'm guessing you ain't ever gonna move anywhere where it's cold. <laughs> I won't even part of cold either. All right, everybody in, right here, take a knee. Tomorrow, your last football game, okay? So go out there and leave everything out there, okay? Is it gonna be cold? Yeah. Are they gonna be cold? Not as cold, but it don't matter. You'll get over it. The next day, it'll hurt a little bit, and you'll be fine. And you will wish you would have left everything out there tomorrow. I promise you that. Oh! You know, this is the last time. You know, every time I think about it, I'm thinking, we gotta go out on a win. Seniors, you're gonna go out and be captains again. It's the very last game. Guys, this is the last time this group's gonna be together as a team. Every second, no matter how cold, how tired, how awful, whatever it gets, you're freaking fighting. St. Thomas gets the ball, and our defense is trying their best they can, but eventually score a touchdown. And he is in the end zone for a touchdown. We're down 7-0 at this point. The offense has a lot of hype because it's time to put some points on the board. We give it to Powell. He gets past the blitzers. He crosses midfield. We're moving the ball down the field. I feel like I'm having one of my most solid performances, just playing clean football. Right down the field, we're mixing it up well. Dell has a couple nice runs. We swing it out right, it's caught, he's got to get past the man. He spins out of it, he's going to be about a half yard shy. We do a couple good things, and then we take back-to-back -back sacks. He'll come into the arms of a Tommy defender, and he is dropped down. Then we get a fourth and eight, and I get hit. Ren's got some time. He'll be flushed out to the right looking. We'll take a shot down the middle. It's gonna be caught by Turner, who caught it. I've got a play I wanna call, so Jake Davis goes in, and I decide, you know what? It's next man up, I'm gonna call it anyway. And they want him to throw it. A little pump fake, they'll take a shot down the far sideline. He's got a man's caught, and it's a touchdown! How about Jake Davis? His first career touchdown pass. As the game progresses, they're doing exactly what we expected them to do. To Rice, he goes right and he bounces back left. That's a great run, cutting up to the 25-20, 15-10, far sideline to the five, and Colby Smith runs him out. You know, they're still able to hit us on some runs and stuff like that, and you know, seeing that happen and all that kind of stuff, it's tough. I'm not feeling great, but it's our last game of the season. I think I'm still good to play, so I go back out there. Coach Kelly calls a new play that we formulated during practice. Jalen Witcher with the touchdown grab, his 12th touchdown catch of the season. It's just another touchdown to put us on top. First play of the series, I just blow through the A-gap. Under heavy pressure, and we drop him back at the 47-yard line. Trying to get to him is Colby, if Dolan steps up, trying to get away, he's not going to, and the ball popped out, the ball popped out to 40, and I think PC's got it, and we do, at the 39-yard line. The defense makes some really big stops and gives the offense the ball back. We force a fumble here, and now we've got a chance to really, you know, kind of put our stamp on this thing and say, hey, you're in for a fight for this entire game. Then I call a pass play, and we throw an interception. He throws it, and it is intercepted. And that ball picked off, and it'll be Tommy football at the PC 40-yard line. The interception was odd. Wren intentionally threw the ball behind our receiver, which never happens. You threw it five yards behind him. Why did you throw it five yards behind him? Right here. And he was looking at all and it. Oh my gosh, it's just... See, this is what freaking happens, Wren. You know, we kind of talk about that, trot him back out there. He throws another interception. Wren in the shotgun, back to throw, chunks it out, intercepted, and that's going to be a pick six. This time he threw it to the wrong side. That's not what Wren does. Why would he throw the ball not in the window and try to throw it to him where he wants to instead of just running the play? And before I can even think through the scenario and talk to Wren, we've got to go back out there, and he throws a third interception. The ball was thrown, it's another interception. It's picked off by Hurd again. He's tripped up by Nando at the five yard line. Three straight passes, three straight interceptions, and all that happened within like a minute. Anybody by Danny? Tell him to check Ren. He's throwing to the wrong side. And that'll take us to the end of the first half. Your score, St. Thomas 35, Presbyterian College 15. This is my fault that got out of hand. Keep playing the same as you came out in that first quarter and you'll give us a chance, okay?
Coming out in the second half, they start off, they go down and score. Looking for room, he'll hesitate, he'll wait for a hole, and he'll sprint right through it, and it's a Tommy touchdown. I'm gonna put Jake in for a few minutes. I've got to. Go tell him to get ready. We go back out, Jake, he gets hit. Here's a play action, Boy, Davis has to scoot around it, and fires it low to Nathan Lovett, it's incomplete, and Davis took a shot. He lays on the ground, and he's hurt. It's obvious he's hurt. There's just shock everywhere. I'm looking at him and I just don't know what's going on. You know, he's not really moving. That's never a good thing in football, you know, if somebody's not moving. They eventually bring the stretcher out. He's okay. He just, he got hit and it was whiplash. They think it's a muscle around the neck, but as soon as you say neck, they can't let you up. He feels everything. He's talking, he's pissed because he's having to lay down. It was just, you know, hard to see your teammate in pain, especially if he was trying to make a difference in the game. You know, we just got to adjust and I guess next man up. We started the season with seven quarterbacks in August, and now we are down to one, Warner Bush. So Warner Bush comes in and he's dropped the snap. And they'll pitch it underneath, breaking a tackle in the end zone. It's a touchdown. From then on, you know, it was really a struggle just trying to get something going. There's a St. Thomas touchdown. I think you're going to see a team that looks very, very different about nine months from now. That's such a good representation of our season. Everything going well, like we're doing our jobs, and then so quickly it will just turn around and become like the worst nightmare ever. I don't know where you are, where you stand, on what you think about me or the coaches or anything else. But I know this, I had guys that grew on me that I was like, man, I don't know about that guy. I'm trying to find a way to love that guy. And I had so many of you that did that for me. Always remember this, somebody on this team, I promise you, was so glad you were on the team. I don't care who you are. And they counted on you every day. And by you continuing to show up every day, you were there for him. It's been a pleasure, fellas. It's been a pleasure. I know some of y'all might not see it, but you're going to look back one day and appreciate this. I promise. You're blinking, it's gone. I'm telling you. Let's go. Hoes on one, two, one. Oh. Looking back, it definitely had its real lows, but there was definitely highs. There are times where I'm like, why did I do this? But at the same time, I got to develop as a person. I got to mature more. You know, I feel like as an athlete, I've definitely grown a lot. And just being able to play D1 ball, I'll never regret that. I mean, I'm, I'm just pretty pissed off and ready to get working on next season. I'm definitely grateful for what I learned. I don't like everything I went through, but I think it just made me better at the end of the day. We got more football to be played. Still got two more or three more years of eligibility. Only a freshman. You know, it might be the end of some, a story that, you know, didn't go our way, but at the end of the day, I see it as, you know, time to start a new chapter and to be able to be a new me. Yo, Megan, what you got on? I mean, besides this video on my laptop, I'm rocking the Star Play collection. Sheesh, that's a banger. Where'd you get that? The overtime shop, duh! Just click right here and get fed like me.